hope you guys are good today. Um, we out here. We chilling. We doing it. Um, sorry for the lack of videos this week. It's been really, really crazy with my other two jobs. And so everything's been real, real crazy. I haven't had a lot of time to uh, make videos. I, I, I want to make good, good videos, not bad videos. So I haven't really had a lot of time. So I just kind of was like, all right, I just got to pause. Anyways, I uh, should be back in the normal swing of things as time continues to go on. Hope you guys are doing great today. Like I said, um, shout out to... Uh, Clan HQ, look, they sent me this dope shirt. Um, we've been doing some sponsorships with them recently, so this is a freebie for you guys. Shout out. But yeah, so we've been doing some sponsored videos for them. This one is not sponsored by them, but I'm wearing the shirt because it's dope. So make sure to check out Clan HQ if you guys haven't already. Um, today, we're going to be talking about, uh, what are we talking about? All right, the best T4 abilities that you can put on teams right now. Um, I don't want to like go through each team. It's kind of hard, right? Because we could go through each team and say, all right, well, you need this, you need this, you need this. Like best T4s for blah, blah, blah. But Casino has a lot of videos like that. And there's no point in me really trying to compete in those videos with him because he does a good job with them. And there's just no point. So I'm probably just going to go through what I think are the best T4s in the game right now. Like top 10, kind of what I'm thinking. Top 10 is good. Top 10 is fun. And you kind of have to do top 10 lists when it comes to like best things right now. Because as we found in my last video, a lot of people are like, oh, well, why'd you put legendaries on this top 10 list? And it's just because it's you have to, right? Because if you don't put legendaries on it, people are like, well, what about the legendaries? And then you put legendaries on it and people are like, oh, but this is just all legendaries. And I'm just like, I don't know what you want, YouTube. But we're trying. We out here, like I said. This is going to be the top 10 best T4s in the game. Um, this is my opinion doesn't mean it's gospel would love to hear your opinions in the comments below let me know what you think what you would do instead i just sneezed like 27 times might be thinking where are we gonna go who's gonna be the first one let me uh tell you let me let you guess all right you've taken your guess cool all right our boy ultron here so we're just gonna put all of his t4s kind of i don't know we'll, we'll we'll do this with a with an asterisk this is in my opinion the best t4 in the game right now having this t4 you can completely change battles with just him and so i mean i won a battle the other day where i just had him and minions and i 4v1 or 1v4'd an entire enemy team in arena and so it's like it's just crazy because it's just so strong like the team i was facing was uh it was a regular kind of standard team it was uh magneto the the standard arena team magneto vision ultron phoenix and juggernaut and i had taken out ultron but then they wiped out the rest of my people and all i had was ultron left versus dark phoenix juggernaut magneto and vision and i used ultron and three minions and i won the battle this is by far in my opinion like i said the best t4 in the game um, as far as the rest of these go, I don't know where I can say that they line up against the rest of them, but all I know is that when you put all of these on him and you take him all the way up to tier 13, level, whatever, he turns into the greatest character in the game, not even close. So the only person who's remotely close to as strong as him is Captain Marvel. And so with all of this, I think that just Ultron in general, T4s, amazing now if you're like well i don't have a lot of t4s um you definitely need this one you definitely need this one this one is actually very good i think a lot of people sleep on it very good this one just does extra damage it's also good but it's, it's extra damage so if you're not sure um i would skip out on this one but they're all very very good heavily 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 recommend so ultron that just counts as one so top 10 one now here's where the list kind of gets a little, I guess, like squirrely because the next like probably like two through five are pretty much, they're just all tied. Um, it really depends on your roster for most of these T4s. A lot of people ask me, oh, like what T4 should I put on my team? And I was like, well, w what teams do you have built? Because I could say, well, you should put them on Magneto's Brotherhood of Mutants. But if you have a really strong Wakanda team <laughs> or something else like that, then you should put them on that team. If your brotherhood is not good, then you shouldn't put it on them because it's not going to help if you don't have Mystique or Juggernaut or whatever. So these are all up to interpretation. They're tied per just like 
your team, right? So whatever you have. So Brotherhood of Mutants, amazing, really, really good. You put that on there. I mean, that team just amazing. So we're not gonna spend too much time on it, but that one is very, very good. It just takes the faction to the next level, which is why you want it. That just goes along same here, right? <clears throat> so this, amazing, 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 super good. And it turns shield into a totally different team. It's kind of just, that's how it is. Again, now if you have a good Brotherhood team, you have a terrible shield team, like they're just low level gear, not start up, then you should put them on Magneto. Vice versa, you would put them on Fury. So that's kind of how that is. Now, I will say this ability here, this notwithstanding, this is a very good ability. Uh, being able to summon two to three people and getting that extra 40% damage. Now granted, the damage really isn't that much, but the the when you get a third person in, it is so helpful because if you're able to summon multiple operatives when you're in like a fight where there's a lot of like taunting or just positive effects, that really helps out Nick Fury because they don't really have a lot of removal unless you run operative yourself. So this ability itself is very, very, very good. This one falls into the top five as well. Again, I'm going to just say <clears throat> with these characters, like Ultron's abilities were number one. Magneto's you know, passive here, unique here. This is, um, just this one is good. This one is way unnecessary, but I just liked it, so I did it, but you definitely don't need that one. And then with him, both of these are so good. Like, if you're gonna run Nick Fury, you need both of these. I think, guess that's what I'm getting at. You need both of these to run Nick Fury. You only need this one to run Magneto. And then with Ultron, you really need those, those the second, third, and fourth one to really run him in arena. Of course, I mean, it, this list is just, you know, the first little bit is just going to be legendaries because it just, it is, you know, like that's just simply how it is. If I say we're gonna make a best list, then the best list has to include this best stuff. Even if we already look at it like, oh, we already know that. But that's why I do top 10 instead of top five because top five is this gonna be, oh, here's the legendaries and everybody's gonna be like, okay, that was, what, why did I watch that? This ability is very good. This ability is very good. I think that if you're going to run Phoenix, you need both of these. This gives extra health and damage to X-Men allies and Phoenix. Very important, I think. And then when you go over to Dark Phoenix, it does an extra 50% damage and gives defense down for two turns, which is super epic. And then this one just gets um, more damage, clears all positive effects before... If you didn't have this one to the, with the T-Force, it doesn't clear all positive effects, which is kind of the point, right? So those abilities are very, very good. If you're going to run Phoenix, that's what you want. These other ones, they're just not, you don't need them. They're not really very good, um, but that falls in there. Again, tied with the rest of the guys, right? So maybe you don't have a good X-Men team. Okay, well, you don't really need this ability then. I mean, it, I, I would put it on there for the two-turn defense down, but, you know, like... If you're just running her in arena, like you could get away without it. I recommend it, but you could get away without it. And this one would just be really good for that. Now, I don't, I don't know. A lot of people that I know don't really have these, but I don't really know why because they're super good. I mean, Captain Marvel is, you know, arguably aside from uh, Ultron, the best standalone individual character in the game, right? So why would we not put stuff on our T4s? Let's check them out. So, okay, get an extra 90% damage. Cool. That's a lot. Get an extra 100% damage. Cool, that's a lot. Put this on here, extra damage on her little AOE thing, and you get an additional 10% healing at the end of the turn when she's in binary. Like, why would you not? So she heals her 20% of her max health at the end of each turn, excuse me, not even with binary, just at the end of each turn. So it's like, why would you not want to have those on there? These are really good. I, I think that these are very underrated uh, T4s. I see a lot of people without them. But uh, these are uh, very, very, very good. Now, which ones do you have to have? Which ones are the ones that really make the list? Which one really makes the list here? Uh, that would be this one, higher, further, faster. These other ones are great. I think binary is important. I don't think Warbird is as important, but binary is definitely important. But higher, further, faster, if you're gonna pick one, is definitely the one to do. So I would do this one, this one, this one. Uh, this one I've thought about doing, but 40% is not that much, so it's kind of whatever to me. But higher, further, faster, so that's like number five on the list. We're getting into more just like unique ones now, so I would put higher, further, faster in there. Binary just kind of comes a little later because it's not like the most difference making. I mean, it, you do a lot of extra damage, but I don't know. I'd do both if you can, you know, if that's someone you're building. Again, it kind of comes down to roster, right? Like, 
if you have high red stars or if you have high gear or you want to build her then yeah those things go on there but if you're just looking for one like all right like i want my captain marvel to be like usable and stand above like and she could be good at war then yeah higher further faster you put her in there and then you put her on a solo war team and she's amazing now right now one that has come out that is very important if you're running fantastic four is this bending light ability without the t4s on this ability that team does not work that's kind of just like how that team works because you stealth thing and the, or you stealth everybody and then you remove the stealth from thing and put the immunities and deflects and stuff on him and so that works with the fantastic four team again same disclaimer i'm gonna sound like a broken record if your fantastic four sucks then don't do this because it'll be pointless if your team is not geared up appropriately it's not going to work because it's going to stealth the wrong person so that ability is amazing it makes this team go around but if you don't i guess if the team's not built up right it's going to be useless now you guys are probably going to be like oh what are you ah! shuri has good t4s in concept and i think that her wakanda forever one does make a difference in the wakanda team because on spawn you apply speed up to self and all wakanda allies so if you're trying to run this team this is imperative you have to have it just like the same thing with magneto nick fury you gotta have them on there again this kind of falls under the legendary so it's in there you have to have it if you're gonna run that team i don't know how imperative it is this probably i mean it, it fits the list because it's a good ability it's a good ability and it, it if you're running that team it is so imperative I think it's so important. So even if you, if you want any sort of even viable Wakanda team, you need to have that. Even for, I mean, it helps a lot even just in doing blitz matches. So that one's important just as well. Next one we're looking at here. I love this dude. Graviton's amazing. His ability right here, his passive ability, unique ability, whatever we call it. This one's really, really good. It just literally just gives aim an extra 10% damage. And you might be saying, wow, that doesn't seem like a big deal, but they don't, they hit decently, but then when you put this on, they hit like pretty good. It makes a difference because the aim team lacks damage. This one makes the top 10 list because if you have it, it just increases aims viability even more and aims already pretty good. And now after the rework, of course, they're good. And so if you put that ability on, it's just, it makes a difference and you see the difference when you're playing. And I think that that's what's important, right? Because you want to see a, just a very like tangible difference for a team. Putting that one on made a huge difference with my team. I noticed that I was actually like battles that I was struggling with before. I was able to just kind of like inch my way through and win because I had just a bit of extra damage. All right, so Vision makes the list here with his primary attack. They recently fixed this and it was not making it so his basic forever was not applying bleed to each tech enemy. It was only applying bleed to one tech enemy. Like the first person that you hit, if they were tech, it would do it. And then anybody that it chained to it, it would not. It was that way for a long time. I don't know if they fixed it yet or if they are fixing it. I don't know if they're talking about it because it went on for a long time. So if I'm not supposed to talk about this, sorry. Um, <laughs> but uh, so that's gonna be fixed. That makes this ability so good because if you're fighting a tech team, like, you know, a team with like Ultron and his minions and stuff, you can get more bleeds and you get those offense downs chained. You know what I mean? Because it it didn't chain before. When you put this on here, it chain it had a small chance to chain. And now it is a guaranteed chain to multiple people, gets the bleeds, the offense downs. The offense downs are huge too, of course. Like let's not even sleep on that. But uh yeah, so that ability I think is very good, especially I mean I use vision in arena. I don't want to take him up to tier 13 though because I don't want to use these gammas I'm trying to save to get the 24 so that I can take Minerva up to tier 14 as soon as possible. We all know, I mean, she's very important in the game and probably will be for any new game modes coming up. So I want to make sure to save those gammas just in case you wonder. Now, I actually really like this one, Lock and Load for Punisher. I did not, I don't know, I don't know. Somehow for the longest time, I, I only, I put this on him like maybe a month ago. I just didn't realize like what it did and it makes it so he will assist attack on every non-attack ability that you do with defenders i didn't realize that before i just thought it was always a chance but no so now it'll always attack and so it's like oh okay um and that is so important so important and that's of course 
So if it, yeah, like I said, with defenders, it goes in and it's a 100% chance on non-attacking abilities to assist, which is awesome. It's so good because you can target it correctly and like he can take people out and just go in on stuff. Punisher is awesome. I really did not recognize how great he was for a long time. I just didn't acknowledge it because I just didn't really like him. And then I just kind of, I don't know, one day I had my eyes open. I was like, oh, this dude's actually very good. And so hopefully you're not like I was, but he's very good. And that ability makes the defenders team so much better. And I don't know if a lot of people are going to agree with this one, but uh, Ronin's, uh, his passive ability here, I think that it is amazing. I think it is so good. I put this on immediately when he got his rework because I saw how good it was and I wanted my Creed team to be better. So you heal for an additional amount of health. The healing doesn't really matter. 1400 is literally nothing. Like you can deal 1400 damage with like a level 30 character <laughs> on their basic. So that's really nothing. But uh, the 15% of his max health, that's amazing. That was already there, of course. But then you get the 15% resistance to Kree allies, which brings it up to 30% resistance. And that is incredible, right? So you have 30% just resistance boost across the board, which that makes like Cree Royal Guard really, really good. Hard to remove his taunt, hard to put negative side effects on him and you want him to be soaking everything up. And then with all the healing and everything else, this ability is just incredible. I love it and it's just so good. And I don't know if a lot of people have it. I mean, you know, this team is not like the best team ever, but this ability, it's again, it's just the same as like Gravitons or Shuri's or any of the other legendaries. He's not a legendary, of course, but any of those other characters, like you put these T4s on this team and it, or on him and it takes this team to a whole new level, which is amazing. I love it. All right, so last one we're gonna talk about today, and this kind of goes back with defenders. They're kind of falling out of favor, but this ability is pretty good, um, is his extra healing on his passive ability. It's pretty good. Um, I mean, it just gives more healing and he's the healer for the team. So that's a good one if you're kind of like struggling with matchups with defenders. If you're like, oh, I keep losing, like in like maybe like raids or whatever you're doing, put that on there. I think it'll make a difference. Uh, this one could be good as well. 100% extra damage. I've never tried it. It makes it one of the highest percentage attacks in the game. I don't think it is the highest. I think Wolverine still has the highest on his ultimate. But, and that's that's terrible. Please never do that. But this it, the healing just goes a bit off the charts with that one. You definitely need it if you're going to run them really in any capacity in any of the modes in a serious way. Um, if you're going to try and rely on them at all, you definitely need that for the healing. A couple of honorable mentions that I know people are going to be like squealing about in the comments. Uh, Star-Lord, I have a bunch on him. I like these abilities. I mean, I like that one. I really like this one and I don't actually really care about this one. I really didn't think that it made that much of a big boost for the damage. But none of these, like you don't have to have these. Like it's not like if you don't have these, guardians aren't gonna run. Like they are, they'll be just fine. And you know, because you get that from this ability here and you don't need the T4s on it. Now again, it's amazing. I recommend it, but I don't really know if it's like the best. Like you don't have to have it. And so, I mean, this one's really, really good. This one helps a lot in Fear of the Darkness. Uh, so if you're struggling with Fear of the Darkness using Star-Lord, uh, you could put that on there. This one, I mean, it does more damage, but I, again, it wasn't very noticeable to me. So that's an honorable mention in my mind. I'm sure you guys are gonna give me so much flack in the comments. Uh, Mordo, I love Mordo, so I have this one. That one is, you know, you don't need that. Um, I consider that an honorable mention though, because I like it. I have a bunch, I have them on Shield Trooper. Icer rifle, fire support, just because I have the big red star, so the more damage, like even at small percentages, the bigger damage is like big slaps. It slaps real hard. <clears throat> Black Panther's passive. I mean, this is good if you're running Wakanda. A lot of people like it no matter what. I don't think it's necessary unless you're running strong Wakanda. Uh, spider man Spidey Sense, if you're trying to run Spider-Man, this is good. It helps with a brawler team, but there's other ones that I would do before it in future i mean in if i could go back in retrospect his basic is really good too you know gives you an extra little bit to gain evade overall i mean there is a lot of really good ones in the game oddly enough minerva doesn't have any ones that i consider must need carnage i mean i've always thought about doing this one and i just have not yet i mean it's a, it's a cool ability and i love carnage i just haven't gotten around to it you know, and so a lot of these characters you can look in and you can make the case for anything, right? Like you could say like, man, isn't it important to have shield assaults uh, passive here for a shield team? Yeah, but if you have a strong shield team, you know, that's like a totally different thing. If you're trying to build a specific team, 
it's different. Or if you have big red stars on somebody, it's different. Or if it's a character that you really like, it's different. I feel like I tried to name the ones that I think are the best in the game for you as a player, just in general, where you can make the decision on your own. Uh, another honorable mention here is this one. This one is very, very good. It gives her a 100% chance to assist and to grant assist to hero brawlers. Um, that one is very good, but I don't have it. I thought about getting it, but I don't really use that team that much. But that one's another honorable mention that if you want to run strong brawlers, that's an incredible one. It just really depends on where you're going. So that's kind of like the whole just thing with this list. It just depends on what you want, where you're going. A lot of people absolutely love this ability on Thanos. I don't really care about it. I've never had an issue where I'm like, oh yeah, I really need, I need the extra 25% chance. My rocket is always using his ult constantly when I run this team, when I run that team. So it just depends on what you want, where you're at. There's a lot of good ones. I definitely recommend checking with people before just dumping them on things because something might seem good to you and then be terrible. For example, I did this because I was like, oh yeah, this ability is dope. This team's gonna be amazing. And this ability sucks. <laughs> it, it just sucks it's pointless because by the time that he dies the battle is either already won or lost nine times out of ten you know and so it's like okay like whatever like it's just kind of like a waste now an honorable mention here steel form this one's really good if you're running this team i don't run this team but i have it anyways but if you're running this team that's imperative you know so it's just again there's so much just left up to figuring out if you're trying to run a fantastic four team dude you want this ability because you just blast the crap out of people you want this ability because it flips the effects but if you're not running that team and it's an uncommon team to run right now you don't really need it you know and so like the same could be said scientist supreme has a good one a monstrosity has a good one mantis has a good one you know and so it just depends on what you're trying to run i mean psylocke has good ones namor has good ones agent colson is going to have good ones it just depends on what you want to run so that said, leave in the comments down below if you're building a specific team and you have questions, you're like, hey, I'm building shield team. What are good ones for shield team? I'll let you know. And uh, if you join Discord and ask, I send you screenshots and we'll figure it out from there. But we've gone on long enough rambling here about my opinions. Um, oh, real quick, don't forget Okoye's basic. Uh, you need this if you're gonna run a whole kind of team. You have to have it. That's about as imperative as Shuri's passive ability. Just saying, I didn't know that for a long time and Wakanda's still not they don't blow my mind but they're a lot better now that i put that ability on i've kind of like gone on rambled a bit long enough about all of this stuff so let me know what you guys think leave a like on the video if you enjoyed it today if you're having a great weekend and that's it that's all we got uh make sure to subscribe to the channel we're almost to 5,000, which is amazing i'm super excited about that we're gonna do something for 5,000. i'm not sure yet it might just be i might do something goofy or we'll do like a special stream or like maybe we'll do a giveaway or something i'm not sure but we'll we'll figure it out when we get there because we're almost there but thank you guys so much for watching appreciate you you're amazing you're great you're beautiful and i'll see you guys in the next one <laughs>